Welcome ladies and gentlemen. During William Ruto's tour in the United States of America, he had two agendas. One of the agenda is to explain how the Kenyan government have failed to deliver in his second term as a deputy president, ironically, in a government that he serves. Secondly, was to explain to the international community the underhand deals or plans by President Uhuru Kenyatta to rig him out. Now, that has been well executed through meetings that he has held with the business community, uh, the lectures that he was doing in the universities, and the church, and also the television interviews that William Ruto has been having. So, and that has attracted a reaction from Mutahingunyi. And they want us to look at what Mutahingunyi tweeted just about this. Wewe Chebukati of IEBC. Sabine Chege told us elections will be rigged. You summoned her to explain. Now Ruto has told Americans that elections will be rigged. You must summon him to explain or drop Sabina Chege inquest. Or maybe some animals are more equal than others. In the first value, you might look at this tweet and feel like Mutahi Mungunyi. You might look at this tweet and feel like Mutahi Mungunyi is coming in defense of Sabina Chege. While all of us have to agree that the statement by Sabina Chege was quite unfortunate. But also, the second in command walking out of the country to insinuate such a big allegation is also more hurting. So what exactly is going on? William Muto have, have spoken and said, said that, that he is, is William Muto spoken, spoken and, and said, said that, that he is willing, willing to, to testify, testify on, on the vote rigging claim. So fire. William Ruto is simply turning around, is trying to make his supporters believe that it is about him, it is him to win, and if he's not going to be announced, then he's deemed to reject the results. That is something that is coming out. And I want you to, if you pay keen attention to the US tour, it seems like it was scripted. The person who interviewed Ruto in that, the first place, I think that institution, the interview at VOA, and what he said in those two institutions, they look like scripted. The same words, the same statement, the same, both about government, vote rigging, government, vote rigging. You see the same words that tell you that he was on a U.S. for a specific mission to make sure that he paints the government on a negative note. Two, he's making these allegations away from Kenya to first show the world that Uhuru wants to cling on power. If there is a narrative in the African context that is normally so sensitive and sells in Europe, in this um, character by incumbent African presidents to cling on power. Now, when you come out and you say that you want to be rigged out, and he comes, he actually says eh, that the president wants to put a puppet president in the name of Raila Odinga, which I totally don't appreciate that. But then, if you tell the Europe nation, European nations that, the understanding or the interpretation that in their media and the international community is that President Uhuru Kenyatta wants to cling on power just the way Mugabe did the Mali issue. That is what they are trying to do. Now, this is something that will attract attention to Kenya. And when Ritro says election has been rigged, people are now going to give him that attention. So that is also another another issue why this is coming up. Now, three, William Ruto wants to be involved in the electoral process. If you remember uh, in the run-up 2017, the NASA, which was led by Ryan Odinga team, were actually blaming IBC on awarding tenders irregularly, on even the, 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 the tenders, the, the voter uh, uh, audit of the register and the tenders that were being awarded in the run-up general election, there were always complaints. So what William Ruto wants, and that is why he is actually willing to go to IBC 
to testify in that case because what he wants, he wants to be involved in that process. So long as he gets entrance, he will now start questioning this, that, what about the Kim's kit, what about the voters register, and that is something that he will do. He wants to get involved so that he can actually know what is going on in terms of election preparedness because, for lack of a better word, he is in the blues. He doesn't know because first what the UDA team did, which was a big mistake on their end, they first made a perception that the voting process does not matter. The referee does not matter. What only matters is the fact that people go and vote. Now, they are coming too late to at least audit the voting process, uh, audit the re referee at the moment where when it comes to pre preparations, it almost 70%. After the audit of the register, it will be verified, then it will be published. We are done. There is no other tender that is going to be awarded. The deputy president is playing the victim card. The victim card is what he has been doing after the handshake. When he walked out of the handshake, he became so skeptical and made a perception that handshake was to fix him out. So after that, it was all about, I am being harassed, I am being intimidated by the government. And that has been carrying the momentum up to date. But then it seems after the Sagana 3, or rather in this 2022, the president is been hands off and is now revealing bit by bit every dossier about his relationship with William Ruto. Now, the latest president's revelations on William Ruto are making people to change their consciousness on that narrative that he was a victim of the handshake. Because they are now telling him that he was part of it. They are telling him that he walked out of the government. So that is why, critically, he is now pulling up, this is the last card he has. He has said everything that these people want, didn't want me out. And now the last card that he has is now to say that finally, they want to fix me out. Now, according to him, this might attract sympathy votes on his support base. But on the other hand, that can only attract that sympathy on the Rift Valley voters. But now the other voters from Central Kenya and the rest of the country, which people who are a bit neutral, might have a perception that William Ruto have already been rigged out, he's already in a position, and he's not going to get power. So that can translate to a low voter turnout, even in his own backyard, the Kalenjin community. So in my understanding, this is why this is being pulled. But if it is not taken critically, I don't think it is something that can really attract the political capital that he is intending to achieve.